Hi and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna go back to basics a little bit. We are gonna be going over um, economics, heavily on finance as well. I know I've been doing a lot of news lately, but it was very important that I did do that news for you and I will continue to do that so that I can keep you ahead of the curve so that you know what's gonna be happening, not just a week or two weeks or a month ahead, but sometimes a year or so. In fact, today's video, we're gonna mention stagflation. And I'll ju actually just show you that two years ago, uh, over two years ago, actually, I actually made a video which talked about the stages that we're in right now. And it seems as though the banks, the central banks, the media have finally caught up with that forecast. And they are all now shouting, not just stagflation, which is uh, very bad because what does stagflation mean? It means a level of high inflation with low economic output and high unemployment, something we're gonna focus on today in terms of layoffs and savings rate, debt rates. So we're gonna talk about all of that. So let's get straight into it. I'm gonna take you over to the shared screen now then. So let's start with a little bit of context because we're gonna be talking heavily in today's video on the UK and the USA. Now this doesn't just apply to the UK and USA, it will apply to most Western, and not just Western, but other nations as well. So we have this headline, this is from the FSB. This is the Federation of Small Businesses, a very, very important UK organization. And they are saying this is a fact, this is going to happen. Nearly half a million small firms are at risk of going Bust. Now, why is that? Well, firstly, they're calling on Rishi Sunak, again, Fishy Rishi, as we call him on the channel, for more support to deal with this ticking time bomb. What do we talk about? What, when we go back to the London Has Fallen video, I went around and I talked about that, one and a half million views on that video now, and I talked about the death of the small business and how this was all part of this bigger economic downfall that we are seeing in the last five to seven years, where we have all of these small businesses that are collapsing in favor of larger businesses taking over their market share. Almost half a million small businesses are at risk of going bust within weeks. This is from the chairman of the FSB. What's the reason? Again, we all know this, we've covered it multiple times, rising costs, which is uh, slightly different to consumer inflation. This is more a case of producer inflation. But it's not just producer inflation. We, we can also look at consumer inflation with the businesses because the, the gas costs, heating, lighting, electricity, businesses have to use electricity and energy, or a lot of them do, in order to power their factories and offices and cafes and all sorts of other shops that they operate. Uh, let's have a look at this then. They have got literally weeks left before they run out of cash and that will mean hundreds of thousands of businesses and lots of people losing their jobs. I agree with this and again, you can refer back to my video on employment scarring and it will show you why that is uh, correct, what he said. So he's pointed to figures from the office for national statistics of the United Kingdom, which showed that 40% or 2 million of the UK small businesses had less than three months of cash left to support their businesses. Of those 2 million, the FSB chairman said about 10% or 200,000 were in serious trouble, while another 300,000 have only got weeks left before going bust. Now I'll show you why this 10% figure is relevant when we get onto SPACs, which is this, uh, article here, but we'll come to that very shortly. Let's look now then at this chart here. This is layoffs.fyi, a really good resource. Now let's look closely at this segment here, and this shows employees. So red is new employees laid off, and the blue is new layoff events. Now what did we see for May? We saw this massive spike in the chart here which we haven't seen since the COVID lockdowns in 2020. Now, what are we seeing? We're seeing getting very high up to those lockdown levels, which shouldn't be happening if the economy is as strong as they say it is. We shouldn't be seeing this spike. So this was May, and then look, we're only a week into June, and already we're seeing 2,500 
layoffs. This is not good for the economy. Um, we can see more detail if you want to get more granular. You can go to each quarter by quarter and you can see this is looking very, very negative. But let's go over to the FRED then. This is the Federal Reserve data of St. Louis and this is the real personal income rate. And what we're seeing is a very flat line as we go through 2016, 17, 18, 19. And then when we saw lockdowns and everything else, we saw a jump in the real personal income rate. And then it went back to normal. And then we saw this sort of sporadic period here between Jan 21 and Jan 22. But here is where it completely dropped off a cliff and has now got back to a 0% line. So why is this relevant? Well, if you think about inflation at the moment and all the propaganda that's being put out about how inflation is, you know, it's not a big deal, we've got it under control, even though we know by using shadow stats data, this is the original CPI-based data and inflation-based data, some of us are experiencing 15 to 20% inflation right now in Western nations. Now, when you look at the charts from the government, it says eight or nine percent. It depends on the on the country. But these are simply not accurate. They are not correct figures. So why is this important when it comes to wages then and real personal income? Because if you think that you are going about zero percent and inflation is going at, let's say, 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent, whatever crazy number we're going to get, that shows that your purchasing power has actually reduced massively. And when your purchasing power has reduced, it means you don't have as much money to go out and spend in the economy. Let's say that you buy food and energy and transport. These are uh, three big ones and housing, rental costs are up, right? So think of those. These are the foundational levels, sort of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, your foundational one, two uh, tiers there. You need this stuff. It's not as if you can just cut out food. You, it's not as if you can just cut out rent. Oh, no, I'll just go and sleep on the on the street. You know, these it's ridiculous to even discuss these things, right? So you can't just cut these out. But what can you cut out? That would be your ice cream and, you know, going to the movie theater, going to your favorite coffee shop and getting your unicorn frappuccino with the gold sprinkles. And they write your name on the cup and it's all, you know, it's a rainbow cup and it's all these beautiful things and it's $10, right? This sort of stuff you can cut out and you probably will cut out. This is discretionary spending. Now, think about this, discretionary spending, where does that go? It goes to the businesses and the businesses use it to pay the employees. Who's that? That is you and the people out there watching this or your family members or your friends or your husbands, your wives, your partners, your children, who, whoever it is. Everyone is part of this greater economy. You start cutting out on that sort of discretionary spending, it means layoffs. So that is where we are. Anyway, back to the shared screen a moment, because I want to give you this example. So this is Target. In fact, let me jump on to this first. Uh, so this is Target and you can see what has actually happened. So this is January through May here. And as we come into June, we've had this massive drop off. Now we can get into all the analytics of this and why it is, but pretty simply, in fact, let's open Yahoo Finance graph on this and you can see what this is now if we if you want to go granular you can go to Yahoo Finance and you can start looking at their earnings and, and what's actually happened here is mainly due to earnings why because they've got too much inventory if you think about all of these ships that we've been tracking and been sat there that they just couldn't unload the inventory well what was that doing it was causing a lot of this uh, sort of build up. So you would go to the store and you're paying more for products. And again, I'm not talking specifically about Target here, but uh, stores in general, you're paying more because there is a higher demand, but there's less supply. So prices go up. Also other inflationary costs. Now that all of this inventory has been dumped, as it were, it all just gets dumped on the stores. They need to get this out and they're missing their earnings, their quarterly earnings. I'm actually going to be making a, a course. I don't know when it's going to come out because I've already put 100 hours into it already. It easily needs another 100 hours, but it will talk all about macro and earnings and beta and you know everything else around investing. Uh, but that's going to be a long way off. But keep your ear to the ground. I'll let you know when that is released. But until it is released, remember, you can always go over to my Patreon link is below in the description. 
and you can watch my monthly investment videos. This was June, it was just put out uh, five days ago. You can see here, 57 minutes long. So here was May's, uh, May's video was about an hour, I think it was over an hour long. So you're welcome to come and look at these videos in the meantime. Now I talked before about a video that I think it's worth you watching. So this was uh, one that I put out on May 1st, 2020. And it says, uh, if you look at the title here, deflation 2020, correct. High inflation 21 to 22, correct. Then stagflation 2023 until we don't actually know. I can't tell you when this will end, but this is the period we're in right now. This is what everyone's talking about. They're talking about this stagflationary period, which means very high layoffs, very high unemployment. Uh, let's look at this article from the Wall Street Journal here. And this is all about SPACs. And they're warning that SPACs are about to go burst. More than two dozen companies say they may not survive much longer. Now, for those of you wondering what are SPACs, here we go. It is a special purchase acquisition company. A special purchase acquisition company, a SPAC, is a company that has no commercial operations and is formed strictly to raise capital through an initial public offering, an IPO, or the purpose of acquiring or merging within the existing company. So SPACs tend to be pretty big companies. It's a pretty big deal if a SPAC is gonna go bust. Now, look at this line here. The companies with warnings amount to more than 10% of the 232 companies that listed through SPACs in that period. Now, what do we say in that previous article here? It was, again, of those companies, 10% were in serious trouble of going bust. Now, this is a pretty big deal when you get to these sort of numbers. Now, I also wanna show you non-farm business sector. So this is the unit labor cost for employees. And what else have we got here, which really is counterintuitive to what we're seeing in the personal income rate, because personal income rate is sat at about 0%. There isn't showing much growth there at all, but yet, if you look at this, it is showing a 7.2 percentage change in the unit labor costs for all employed person. So of course that isn't just what actually goes to the person. There's a lot of other metrics involved in that. It's not just a wage. You, you know, if you think about your wage, there's other things that the company has to pay towards. But you can see 7.2%. So it's rising, making it more expensive for companies. But let's look at the flip of this. Here we go labor productivity output per hour, it is down. Let me just go down here so you can see this um, on the graph. You can see it is down, it is negative 0.6%. So not only are the companies paying more, they're also getting less output for that increased cost. So you can see why we are in big trouble. Now, last few articles here then, UK credit card borrowing rises at fastest annual rate for 17 years. Why is this important? Well, we've got to ask the question, why is credit cards and debt and loans rising at such a rapid rate? It's pretty clear cut to me, it is the inflation, this cost of living crisis that is hitting everyone. Credit card borrowing is rising at its fastest annual rate in 17 years, the Bank of England said on Tuesday, with analysts warning a recession looks increasingly likely as growing numbers of households go into debt to make ends meet. The annual growth rate for credit card borrowing hit 11.6% in April the highest figure since November 2005. UK consumers have now put more than three billion pounds, which is uh, small compared to the USA, but still, on credit cards in the past three months alone, another 1.6 billion on other forms of credit, some of which will have inevitably been used to cover bills and meet other essential costs. So let's flip over then to the USA and we'll look at the Fred graph again. And this is consumer loans, credit cards, and other revolving plans. And what are we seeing here? Look at this. This has just been climbing dramatically since 2021. And you can see the rate at which this has been climbing now. It has plateaued a little bit just since uh, sort of the end of April, but just wait and we'll see how this continues to go up, especially when we look at the personal savings rate here. They're almost perfectly correlated 
debt's going up, savings are going down. Now ignore this blip here or these two blips because what are these uh, due to? A lot of it is stimulus money. People put the stimulus into their, into their savings accounts and then they spent it very, very quickly. A very good test case for UBI, universal basic income and other uh, sort of digital currency based payments and incentives for the future, in my opinion. So we can see the savings rate has just dropped off a cliff, 4.4. You've got to go back a long way to actually uh, get 4.4. So it is not looking good, my friends. So what does all of this lead to? It leads to more layoffs. And I haven't even gone into the more macro big picture, which I highly recommend. Again, watch that Patreon video. The link is below in the description. It is paid um, because it's an hour's content, very detailed and granular financial uh, content with forecasts and all sorts of other things. But in that, I also talk about rising interest rates, how this is very bad for an economy if you use fiat currency and you create currency out of thin air. I talk about quantitative easing and quantitative tightening, which is sucking liquidity out of the markets at the moment. But for today, what you need to know is that job layoffs are coming and they are going to be big. I can't tell you an exact forecast of exactly when this is going to happen. But as usual, just make sure that you are living sensibly and that if you have got a lot of debt and mortgages and the like, it is fixed on a long term low interest rate because that sort of thing is going to save you later on if we do have a pretty dire period of high interest rates and not much uh, money around, not much currency circulating and jobs are harder to come by. I hope that was really helpful to you all today. Um, I'm, I'm here to serve. This is what I'm here for on this channel to help you as much as possible to help you to prepare for this uh, very uncertain future. So thank you so much for being on the channel today and being a subscriber. Take care. God bless you and your families. And I will see you tomorrow.